So in this video, I just want to go through composition, which is another way of creating relationships between objects that's different to aggregation and it has a very different output at the end. So what I want to go through is a different example, because I think, again, this makes more sense in the context of composition, especially when you're learning. Um, so I've got a class here of a house. So just to go through the basics, it's got uh, four arguments that are passed to it to create its attributes. So we've got number, street, town, and postcode. And it's got one method, which is address, that just returns a just returns those attributes formatted in a better way as an address with some new line breaks in there. We've then got a room class, which has, again, four attributes, name, size, chairs, and beds. But again, chairs and beds uh, have default, they're default arguments of zero. So if you don't pass anything, they'll still hold the value of zero. And then we've got down here our four attributes being set under the constructor. So I've got one creation of uh, the house class here with some made up data. I'm storing it in the home variable. So the first thing just to run to check it's all working is printing out the home address, which you can see is outputting as I was expecting it to. So what we want to do in terms of composition is we're going to make some room objects but we're going to create them inside our house class so one way to do it is to do this within the constructor which is again quite a common approach so i could do something like um i could just call them room one and two for now but you get the idea self dot room because they've got names so i'm going to have room one equal in um and I'm going to call this class. And again, I obviously need to pass it at least name and size. So I'm going to call it lounge. And I'm going to give it a size of 30. And it's got zero. Uh, no chairs are first. It's got five chairs, but zero beds in the lounge. Then I'll do room two. And we'll have this being the. Uh, kitchen and the kitchen doesn't have any beds or chairs so we'll just have it like that so we'll have it being a different size as well so we'll have it being 20 so what we've got there is we've got objects that have been created within another class so we've got uh, instances of the room object being made on creation of a house so just to show this working, if I print um, home.room1.size, then when I run it, you can see it's printing 30 because room1 has a size of 30. Now, while well, you're probably thinking I could accomplish what I was doing previously using aggregation with composition, yeah, absolutely you can. The big difference is the relationship those objects have with each other. And this is in a lot of ways a much stronger relationship because these objects are created and belong. So the room objects are created and belong within the house object. So what that means is if I come and delete the house, I am deleting these rooms. So it's about thinking about what type of relationship between those objects you want. Do you want them to have... Um, it so that they are reliant on each other to exist so if i go and delete this house I'm, i knock it down i'm obviously knocking the rooms down as well so in this example this makes perfect sense to do it like this obviously if i make a logic error and i go with the wrong approach my program might not work properly because i might end up deleting objects that i didn't mean to delete and vice versa so that's composition it's another way of creating the relationship between the objects as you can see it's got a different output to aggregation because again these objects belong within the house class now because that's where they were created so they belong to that instance of that object